Hey everybody, it's Jordan with PDQ.com, and we're continuing our getting started guide with uh, the PDQ products. Uh, we covered a lot of stuff so far, but we're, right now we're going to talk about the different type of user accounts as well as the credentials that we have, the credential types that we have on how we can make everything work and keep it secure. Uh, the first type of account we're going to cover is the background service user. By default, this is going to be whatever credentials you use to install the product. That's what's going to be the background service user, but you can obviously change that if it's not what you're looking for. So if you come to options, down to background service, this is right there, and look, it's me. I'm the background service. That's not ideal. I mean, this is something you're not going to be entering these credentials. If you have a service account with a highly secure password, perfect place for that. That's going to be the most secure method. Uh, the account that you build does need to be a local administrator as well as have read write permissions to the repository, uh, repository and the installation source. So if your repo is on the local machine, local administrator is fine. If your repository is out on a file share somewhere, probably going to want that to be a domain account. And it's just up to you, whatever works best for you. Talk to security people and see what they say on that one. The next one we're going to cover is console users. This is people that have access to use the product. So by default, once again, I installed the product. I'm going to be in there as a console user. So we're going to go to options and console users just to see, as you can see, Available console users, we don't have any secondary added, but we do have me again. I control all. Once again, not the best security practice. I mean, having me have access is fine, but using the same account across the board, uh, maybe not so much. But anyone you add in there then has access to log into the system. So if you're using a service account for this, when you log in, if you're logging into your credentials, you're going to want to do a run as for the client and put in the new credentials to open up with that, and that will give you the access you're looking for. Uh, for the console users, since this is the day-to-day -day administration, it needs to be able to, well, you have to do the run as to change the credentials if you need to. Uh, it does need read-write permissions to the repo, and it does need to be a local admin on the machine, just like the, the other one. Uh, the last one is the deploy user. This is the credentials that are used in the actual deployment or the scan. So if we come in here, deploy once, you can see by default we have whiskeytime.club, and it's me again. Me again. Not doing best practice, but who's going to stop me? It's my lab. I do what I want. So edit credentials, you can see currently that's the only credentials we have because I'm pretty close to a default. Uh, but this is where you can come and you can add as many credentials as you want. So if you have multiple domains or multiple different users based on environment, you can set all the credentials you need uh, right here. This is the deploy we're looking at. We're going to go to inventory next because there's a pretty awesome addition with inventory that's going to help you with your security and give you a little bit more flexibility. So in inventory, we're going to go back to options and credentials. And you can see we have the add laps. Laps is awesome. It's the, I think, preferred secure method for most people or recommendation. I don't want to say preferred. It's recommended by a lot of security people. Laps is secure. It's going to be a complex password. It rotates often. If someone gets it, it's useful for a very short amount of time and on one specific machine. It's just the way to go. So if you have laps set up, add laps here, and you're good to go on your environment there. And you may be wondering why have laps inventory but not... Uh, Deploy, and that's for a nifty feature we have here. We're going to come back to the deploy once. When you have both set up, if you check this box here, use PD Core Inventory Scan User, whatever you use to scan the device in inventory will automatically use the credentials over there. So if you have laps set up and you're using laps across the board, it's going to use laps here. If you have uh, this OU needs these credentials, this OU needs these credentials based on department, however you separate it, whatever you have is a functioning scanning credentials in inventory since you're going to be scanning often. Those credentials, since you know they work, will also be used for a deploy. It saves you a lot of time. You don't have to guess. You don't have to mix and match. You just, it just works for you. Uh, that should be pretty much everything you know about credentials and the uh, accounts you need to make it work. Uh, for PDQ.com, I'm Jordan.